Hi. <laughs> Remember me? I missed y'all, and I just decided I had to come on and do a quick little episode. So I'll see you on the other side. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's morning-ish here, but thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Gary Knits. Gary Rides, a craftivism podcast at the intersection of making things and doing good. My name is Gary. I am a knitter and a crocheter and I guess now a designer. And I am also a cyclist and fundraiser for AIDS Life Cycle, a seven-day, 545-mile bike journey from San Francisco to Los Angeles, raising money for the life-saving work of the San Francisco AIDS Foundation and the Los Angeles LGBT Center. It has been a minute. I apologize to everyone that I missed an episode. I was uh, bogged down with my flash d stash because instagram decided to play the fool as they often do and we're making things difficult so the shutdown process for that flash d stash took a couple extra days and i just decided not to film i was thinking about pushing and just doing it and In the last episode, I talked about the kind of burnout I was feeling and had a lot of kind words. So thank you so much for everyone who chimed in and uh, sent kind words and and thoughts. But I kind of took some of that advice and just decided, you know what? If I get off schedule with the podcast, it's not the end of the world for me. It is certainly not the end of the world for you. And I can do it when I can do it. And um, so I was able to close out the D-Stash and give myself a little break there. Um, So I appreciate you for uh, your patience for waiting for a new episode. This is gonna be pretty quick because as I'm gonna talk about in a bit, I'm gonna be back on here in just a few days to walk everyone through this new yarn collection that I'm gonna be talking about. And so I'm gonna have a longer episode then. So I think keep this short and this will be more like a uh, a normal episode. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Gary Knits Gary Rides and on Ravelry as Gary Knits and Rides. Um, it has been, well, here's a quick recap of the last three weeks. So bike riding, fundraising, a little bit of knitting, more bike riding, more fundraising, even less knitting. And that's about it. I guess the Oscars were in there as well. But yeah, we're at that time of the season as it has been for the last uh, five years for me where almost everything I'm doing is tied to AIDS life cycle, either ramping up my training rapidly or trying to figure out how I'm going to get from here to there in terms of hitting my fundraising goals. So the least interesting part of it probably from your perspective is the bike training, but I did do my first back-to-back rides this week, which is always a disheartening moment in the training because you've been doing sort of single day rides with breaks in between and you think like you're getting better, you're getting faster, and then you do a back-to-back and um, that second ride is really, really slow. So uh, that happened this past week. Each week I'm doing a ride that is longer than my longest ride so far this season. So um you know, the longest rides I'm doing now are probably going to be about 60 miles this week. Uh, I did a total of 95 miles in the last four or five days. So that feels pretty good. Maybe a little bit behind schedule because of the rain, but that's okay. Um, given what I'm doing on the fundraising side, if this is the slowest year I have in terms of how I feel about my ride, um, as long as I am able to finish safely, We're going to take that as a win. So that's it on the bike riding side. On the fundraising side, as I mentioned, the Flash D-Stash wrapped up. Uh, I thought it was a big success in terms of um, some of the things that we tried. Instagram made it a pain uh, in terms of some of the bidding, but I think we got that all sorted out. At the end of the day, we raised $2,800 in just a couple of days. So that's a pretty interesting model 
um, that we may try going forward. Um, I guess while I'm, well, we'll talk about the next D-Stash in, in just a minute. So with that D-Stash, with fundraising that is coming in through my uh, annual fundraising letter, um, we have now crossed over the $40,000 mark, which is fantastic. Um, I know we still have money from the Knit Stars Pro-Am pattern sales to uh, come in. I have a couple of matching gifts that I know that are coming in. So I'm feeling very good about where I am, especially since we just kicked off the, the yarn collection, which was going to be my, you know, one of my last big fundraising um, pushes and what I really hoped would push me over the edge in terms of uh, hitting my goals or, or at least getting, you know, to where I was uh, last year was, was the couple months left to go. So Feel really good about that. And as I said, it is taking time out of knitting. In addition to the the bike riding, I've been ramping up with the Stitch Out Loud yarn collection, getting that launched, announced this week, rolled out this week, and opening coming soon. We'll talk about all the details in a minute, but that has been taking up a ton of my time. So the knitting has been, especially since that involved a lot of knitting, that uh, that project. Um, my knitting for myself um, has taken a, a real backseat, but we're gonna walk through a couple. I do have an FO, and I have a couple of whips that I can talk a little bit about. Um, but before we get into the actual knitting, I wanted to talk a little a bit about some craftivism ideas. First upcoming is the Knit for Food Knit-a-thon. Um, a couple episodes back, I mentioned a couple folks who were, uh, that I knew that were doing it. I'm going to drop their links down below in the show notes. And here is a QR code. If you're watching this not on your phone, you can scan that and get the link to the, the uh, show notes. So I will link to those folks, if you are participating in the Knit the Food Telethon, or Knit Telethon, it would be kind of cool to be on TV, but Knitathon, um, which I believe is, I want to say March 22nd or 23rd, all the details will be down below. But drop your link in the comments down below so folks who watch this episode can see your link and donate, and I will add them as they come in into the, into the show notes so that they will uh, stick around there as well. And... DM, if you're doing it, uh, DM me on Instagram. I'd love to share that story. You know, share your story, share your link over there as, as well, and try to get as many people um, helping you out as we as we can. So that is coming up. The other thing I want to mention, and I'm sure many of you have already uh, seen this. It kind of happened in between this episode and the last episode. But um, Adela of Lolo Bean Yarn Co. Uh, lost her mom to cancer uh, a few weeks ago, and she was a veteran, and she had received a lot of care uh, from uh, the VA hospital in the in the Bronx. And as a result of their experience um, working with her caregivers there, Adela has set up a couple of fundraisers for I think once for the VA, uh, once for um, a cancer research project that I think is tied to one of the places that she got she got care, and then one is a GoFundMe to start a program I believe to deliver food. Um, uh, meals to, to, to cancer patients and their, and their, and their families. So I'm going to put the links to all of those fundraisers down below. She is making it her cause of the year to, to try to get this, this, um, her GoFundMe thing, um, up and running, but to send as much money to these organizations as we possibly can. And then the last craftivism thing that I want to talk about is my Stitch Out Loud yarn collection. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen my live where I did a long discussion of how this project all came to be and what is going on to it. But I will do a quicker recap of it here. But basically about six months ago, inspired by my experience last year with Jake of Ken Yarn, who died this yarn for me as a fundraiser for my uh, life cycle, AIDS life cycle last year. This is the Love Bubble colorway that was one of Ken, uh, one of Jake's last um, last dying uh, things that he did before he t uh, shut down the dying part of his business. Anyway, inspired by that idea of having a color that was just for AIDS life cycle and additionally 
inspired by an idea that Ken, uh, Jake, I keep going, <laughs> Jake had um, several years ago where he did a massive collaborative yarn collection called Camp Ken Yarn. Um, I had this idea percolate in my head about seeing if I could get dyers to dye yarn inspired by things that we see, part of the experience of AIDS life cycle. There's so many fun things from Red Dress Day to drag queens at the pit stops and then such natural beauty as we go up and down the coast. I thought it'd be a really kind of great inspiration for a collection um, that even if you didn't participate in AIDS life cycle, because I know there's like three knitters that I know of on the ride. I'm sure there are more, but th those are the ones that I know of. But it's not really for them, but just as a way to kind of experience what we experience as we as we ride down, down, down the coast. So put a thing out on Instagram instant, instantly or with you know within a few hours, I had like 30, 40 people say, oh yeah, you know, I'd be interested in doing something. It wasn't really clear. I didn't spell out exactly what I was, I was thinking, but just a special, um, unique colorway that you would, you know, be, have some inspiration for. And so I shut it quickly down because that seemed like a lot of people. And then over the last, um, six months, I put together a bunch of um, a narrative of the ride with inspiration photos of certain things that I thought would be cool colorways along the way. Um, sent it out to to the, the dyers, and at the end of the day, we have I say twenty three artists. So I think it is nineteen dyers, two illustrators, and two notions makers that have put together a collection that we're calling. Stitch Out Loud, which is a play on this year's uh, AIDS life cycle theme, which is Ride Out Loud. And so we have, I think, 23 colors of yarn, and we are releasing the colors, revealing the colors this week. So today I'm filming this on Tuesday, so this is day two of the, um, the reveals. Um, I'm going to try to get this out, like, tonight, so hopefully you can head over to Instagram, if this is the first you're hearing about it, and check out all the colors that are being revealed. And then next Friday, or no, I'm sorry, next Monday, the 18th, I will, um, I'm going to do a live. And I may try to do, set up two things and do an Instagram live and a YouTube live at the same time. I don't know why you couldn't do that. Hmm. If anyone has any thoughts, let me know down below. But uh, walk through the entire collection, maybe talk about some pattern ideas. And then on the 20th, um, it is going to open up for pre-orders and the pre-orders are going to run from the 20th of March to the 5th of April and then we're shutting it down. So it is a very limited run. Some of the colorways and items will have limited quantities. So I would suggest, you know, if you see something that you're really interested in, um, you know, get in on the early side so things don't sell out. Most of the, you know, most of the dyers have kept things relatively open, but there are some given you're going to see some of the techniques and stuff that, and they're all typically, you know, one person operations. I wanted to let them have control of how much, um, how much they, um, they bandwidth they had to, to dye up the yarn and get it, get it, uh, get it out. So it's all going to be a pre-order into me. I am doing a wholesale order with the dyers. The yarn will ship to me sometime early May. And then the plan is for the second two, the last two weeks of May to, for me to basically turn, um, this into a U, UPS shipping facility and pick and pack all of those, um, all of those orders and get them out before I head up to San Francisco for AIDS life cycle. It seems like a long way away, but it also seems like it's just two seconds away. So, um, that is, one of the big uh, undertakings um, that are going way, going the way. I should mention in terms of the yarns, um, everything is going to be available on fingering weight only. I let the dyers choose whatever base they wanted to. I just said, let's just keep it to one weight because this is already feeling like a big project for you know one person on this end and a bunch of one single people on the other other end. And then, so we have a lot of different bases. There's one non-superwash, a lot of it's 75-25. There's some sparkle bases in there. It's a really cool collection. Sorry, I feel like we just had a little bit of an earthquake. I'll have to check that when I stop him. Anyway, that's sort of strange. Um, feels like things are things are shaking. Um, 
everything's on fingering weight base, sorry. And everything is going to be $32 for a full skein. A lot of the dyers wanted to do sock sets, so we're going to sell those for $38. Um, $12.50 of each skein, $14.75 of each sock set is going to be donated to AIDS Life Cycle. So just as a point of transparency, it's basically 40% of all sales are going to be donated to AIDS Life Cycle. Um, it is 100% of the profit uh, of, uh, of everything that, that's being sold. Um, I'm basically paying the, uh, the dyers full wholesale. Um, we agreed on a retail, I agreed, you know, I said I want, I think $32 is a good price. People know it's a fundraiser, so it's maybe a little bit more than you would pay for the typical um, uh, yarn a hand dyed fingering weight yarn, but I think people get it that it's a fundraiser and I think that's probably fine. And I wanted to pay everyone the same wholesale price at 60%. Um, it's probably higher than some of their, their normal wholesale prices because sometimes they're working on a $28 uh, retail or $30 retail, but I thought it was just fairest to pay everyone the same, uh, same, the same amount. So basically, Except for the cost of the, the yarn itself, everything's being donated to, to AIDS Lifecycle. We're going to have the pre-order pre -order open for two weeks, as I said. Um, I'm not going to show any of the yarn here. I will say that one of the things that I did is I have swatched every colorway that I have. I'm still, we've had some shipping snafus, and we're still waiting on a couple of the colorways that hopefully they'll get here by... Friday or Saturday when the last color is revealed. Um, I think we're good up through tomorrow, um, but we'll see. But what I did do is I did do, and I'll just flash them here. I did do swatches of everything in, and this is Love Bubble because I do have a very, very limited number of skeins of Love Bubble available. Um, but I swatched everything as granny squares and as a stockinette uh, square. So they're all about four inches um, just to see how they, they knit up. I mean, I know kind of a role, uh, you know, kind of a risky move because, you know, you're only working with four inches here. This is going to look very different, maybe spread out over, you know, a wider panel, um, for the, the ones that have, that are more sock centric. I would say there's a couple of colorways that, um, do micro striping when you, um, when you uh, do them at small circumference. So this will give you a, a pretty good idea of that. But I always think this is helpful. Whenever I see collections, I like to see, because I have terrible imagination, looking at a skein of yarn of how it's exactly going to kind of look up. But So you'll, you will be seeing those. As I mentioned, there is a very limited number of skeins of Ken yarn. I had bought it um, last year thinking I was going to use it for a give giveaways or raffles or maybe doing you know have a have some available to sell for for something um so i'm glad i have that so if you missed out on getting some of ken's uh my goodness jake's um yarn you will have a second uh, a second shot so i would say these are my big fo's for <laughs> since the last episode i have been Doing lots of uh, lots of knitting. I've I've gotten pretty fast at the granny square. I got to say. I mean, I can get one of these done in well under an hour. So while we were watching some Oscar movies, I was swatch, swatching um, swatching away. So that is knit out loud or knit out loud stitch out loud in a nutshell. I'm really having struggle bust today with the with the words. Probably because I'm trying to rush to get this done and. Uh, Hadn't planned anything out really because I have a few minutes to film and I thought, let's just do it. So that is Stitch Out Loud in a nutshell. If you have any questions, DM me on Instagram or drop a comment down below and I will try to um, to answer that. But I think that's it. The, there will be, I will, I will link it down below. It's not going to be active yet, but I will link to the Shopify. Um, uh, it's, it's Stitch Out Loud dot my Shopify dot com is going to be the website where everything's going to be available. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited for everyone to see all the colors. I was blown away 
at the interpretation of, of the inspirations and how they executed how we didn't have any real like overlap and it's a nice mix of variegated tonals. We have some self-striping yarn. There's a gradient sock set, as I mentioned. So, you know, with very little planning on my part in terms of like saying, I want this to be a tonal. I did none of that. I kind of let them do whatever they wanted. It really turned out to be a nice, uh, a nice mix. And I will tell you that the collection kind of nicely splits between the sort of natural beauty side of things. So like think more like earth tones and things like that to the fun and crazy part of ALC. So brights, and that's where a lot of the sparkle yarn and stuff is coming in. So I hope you enjoy it. It has been a really, really fun project to, to work on. And, you know, just short of like me actually learning to dye has been a great way to kind of get a little more creative, get creative in a, in a different part of this, uh, in a different part of the fiber world. So it's been, it's been a blast. Um, there will also be stitch markers from a couple folks as well as the bag that I um, held up. Uh, this is artwork by um, Angel Gable, did the logo, the Stitch Out Loud logo, and then Jean Ann from Cerulean Orchid did all the little characters. So you've got Coney, who is the safety mascot of ALC with a ball of yarn, a ball of disco ball of yarn, a strawberry ball of yarn, and then a rider in a red dress for red dress day. So I think it turned out great. Um, so that's it on Stitch Out Loud. In terms of whips and FOs, I showed you my swatches briefly. I didn't want to give away too much with those, but I will have them all um, on the live on uh, on the 18th. But I did finish um, my bascule hat, and I finished it before the end of the um, winter knit along. So this is the TAM. I did the TAM version. This is in, so it's the, the bascule hat and mitts were the pattern we were working on by MK Nance Makes. Uh, yarn from Sea Change Fiber, which if you've been following along Stitch Out Loud, you'll see that this morning her color got released. So Sarah dyed a beautiful blue called Surge, which is inspired by the Santa Cruz boardwalk and a new ride that's coming there this summer. So go check that out. But this is her um, uh, Montera Sock Base and Stormy Seas and Au Natural. And I will definitely be making these mitts. This was a really, really fun project. I've said it a thousand times. Uh, it is was a really fun color work project as a second color work project. Um, and using the Norwegian thimble that Sarah from Sea Change Fiber had gifted me at uh, SoCal Fiber Fair changed everything in terms of like much better tension than my first project. You can look at my floats. Um, I think they look pretty, pretty good for floats. Um, but it was really fun. And uh, I'm not sure. Um, I, someone recommended and I did it. I blocked it on a little salad plate to kind of get the bigger crown more defined. But I don't think I'm really, I don't think Tam is really, I mean, I'm not sure exactly how it's supposed to be. This looks very sort of like <laughs> some sort of comedic character in a European film. Um, I think it works probably best if I just pull it back as a kind of slouchier, slouchier beanie. Um, but definitely keeping it it's super warm uh, because of that double layer in there. And I think it'll be great with the great with the mitts. So if you haven't had a chance to do this yet, highly recommend it as a I would say ambitious beginner color work pattern um, because it doesn't have the rest rows like the Palm Springs cow that we did in the in the fall, but uh, there's not too many floats to catch. Most of the most of them are like under five stitches. So um, bascule. So that is my only fo. I have been. How did that do? Oh, probably. Probably should take a break for. Oh no, I have, uh, yeah, that's the only fo that I have. Um, I had hoped, but swatching got in my way to have wrapped up my um, Geo Gradient. I am into the I cord bind off, just barely, but I'm that far into the into the I cord bind off. Let me see if I can get back here a little bit. But this is how it's going, um, and 
I enjoyed this little dip stitch, uh, but it is a little little tedious, um, a little slow, especially the knit to the purl two together through the back loop um, that been after after you do the dips. So my plan now that swatching is pretty much done. I have this other thing that I do probably need to work on. Um, this was going to be Thursday library knitting group knitting. Um, We'll just have to see. Um, I'm not, if I don't finish it, I, I, I think it'll be done by the end of the month, but if it's not, it's not. And I'm not gonna sweat it, I've waited this long. And we're moving out of false, a swall, shawl season and headed uh, very quickly into the, into the heat. So it's not like it's gonna get a ton of use anyway. I said I had this other thing that I'm working on. I can show it, I can't really talk too much about it, but I did want to show this because the, the the thing itself is going to be funny when it's when it's all said and done. But the way that I'm the the um, materials that I'm using is a, a very funny thing. So this is it. Um, it is very one by one rib, and I was this is a prototype. I'm hoping I can figure out how to. Uh, tweak what I need to do so that if once we want to make some adjustments, I can just not start from scratch, but pick up somewhere, run some lifelines and, and make some changes. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm probably about halfway, halfway done with what it's going to, going to be. So I was working on a prototype. I have some leftover nitpicks, wool of the Andes from that crazy gigantic marled blanket that I made last year. And when the person asked me to do this sort of commission thing for them, I said, "Oh, I have, I have, uh, I have some red yarn, and I can use, I can use that." So I started it in the wool of the Andes, um, and I thought I had more of it than I actually did. I only had two partial skeins, so I got about this far, a little bit less, about where the um, charm is, on that prototype, and ran out of yarn, and so went to. I should have just I should have just gone down to like Joanne and gotten some red something, um, but I went to Knit Picks and was just going to order some more. Will the Andes in red back ordered until I think it would then it was the end of March. I went down the other day. And now it looks like it's end of April. So I and it was called red. It was you know they have like Fiesta red and you know pomegranate red, but this one was like red and. I was looking at other worsted weight yarn they have. They have Brava, which is their acrylic yarn, um, in a color that's called red. They also have different variations of red, but I thought, well, they're both called red. Maybe it'll be close enough um, that I can just pick up both worsted weight, just pick up with the Brava and carry on, and it's not going to be too too noticeable. Um, so I was like, I'll just buy some. I'll just buy some Brava since I don't want to wait for the, the other one. And then I went and saw that they had these gigantic, look how big it is, big, big as my head, gigantic 500 gram <laughs> skeins, uh, skeins of, of Brava worsted weight. And I thought, well, I, I, it, was, it wasn't, it, you know, it's, it's not very expensive yarn. Um, but I was like, well, I can, because I've got to make several of these things once I figure out the pattern. And I, I was like, well, I'll definitely have enough now. Definitely have enough red yarn, and hopefully it will, it will match. And I can just work, work the prototypes, and then and use all this for the the actual things. Um, it's not the same. It's not the same color. I mean, it's close, but it, you're gonna notice um, on that one that there was going to be a uh, a change in color. So I just with the giant skein, I just started over on. Um, on this, and hopefully this, uh, maybe I should take this to uh, to Thursday knitting, or I have South Bay Drunken Knitters this this week as well. I can take that there. It's just one by one ribbing is kind of a kind of a drag to to, to knit on. I'll go, although I guess it's no worse than a high cord bind off. So that's that is my fate for the next <laughs> couple of months. Is I have like two like super duper boring projects to work on. Um, but I think we're down to the end of the swatching, and so those two things will take up whatever whatever minutes of knitting I can get in here or there as, as the biking ramps up, 
it really be, becomes hard because until I kind of get to a plateau and just sort of hold it for a while, um, these longer, as the rides get longer and longer, I just come back and I, I'm just like beat for that the rest of the afternoon. So I usually don't have any energy to even, you know, knit or watch TV or anything. I just go to bed. But, uh, you know, they'll get done eventually. Um, and that is really it on the knitting side of things. I will be starting, along with hopefully all of you, I should have mentioned this up front, but this is how this is happening today, um, that we are about to kick off on Friday the 15th, the Spring and Aids Knit Along and Crochet Along. So as... We have done the last couple of years. This is kind of a spring cleaning, pick up your whips that you have been languishing on and work on those. So it's kind of open to whatever you want to knit or crochet on. Um, if you buy the entry ticket, which is at my coffee page, link down below, you can then be entered into all the uh, prizes that we give away throughout the, the course of the, of the knit along and the crochet along. As I've said before, because we had the opportunity to collaborate with Cassie from Pine Needles and Poppies, um, and this was just the time slot that worked out for everybody. We are also, if you would like some structure, or if you don't have whips to, to clean out, and you want to join in with a bunch of us working on the same project, we are going to be making the Bethel shawl, and here's a picture of it. It is a big, schlankety, kind of boho feeling, but super chill and relaxed shawl that is perfect for me right now if I didn't have these other things to be working on. But I am going to start it, so I'm going to talk about that in a second. But uh, we're going to be working on that from the 15th of March to the end of April. So um, grab that pattern. She is donating during the, the course of this event 100% of the net uh, sales from her, her pattern to AIDS life cycle. There were yarn kits from Royal B that were sold and uh, Kelly from Royal B is donating portions of those sales to, to AIDS Life Cycles. This is the color she dyed up especially for the knit along. It's called Gary's Guacamole, which is kind of awesome. And speaking of Royal B, this upcoming weekend, so 15th, 16th, 17th, um, is the kickoff for the Bay Area Yarn Crawl, which I think goes over two weekends. I'll link down all the information for Bay Area Yarn Crawl down below, but it is a massive event that's happening all over the Bay Area. But on Saturday the 16th, Cassie and I are going to be at Royal Bee Yarn Co. in Pacifica, California, so just outside of San Francisco, for a cast-on party for the Bethel Shawl Knit Along. So Kelly warmly invited us to come hang out in the store. They're going to also have trunk shows from a couple of people. I think like Della Q is going to be there that day. Um, and then I think the next day, Ava from Seismic Yarn is going to be there. So they're, they're doing a lot of events in the store, as are, I imagine, most of the, the stores involved in the, in the yarn crawl. Uh, but this weekend, there's a, there's a ton of stuff happening at Royal Bee. So if you are a Bay Area person or nearby, come hang out with us. I'm going to try to do... I just saw... Uh, Nicole from Professor Pearl did her little vlog for the Rose City Yarn Crawl. So I think I may do like a vlog of that day in Pacifica. Pacifica is cool because um, it is one of the, the places where we um, ride through on the very first day of the ride. And in fact, if you're watching this and you've been following over on Instagram, Jada Wu uh, Designs, Jess at Jada Wu Designs, has put together a colorway. Let me see if I can find it here. Since it's already out, I can show it, right? Um, that is called Foggy Pacifica. And it is inspired by the greenery in the fog of Pacifica because it's almost always foggy there. And actually, would be a perfect match with Gary's guacamole um, if you wanted to hold it double. Anyway, um, so... Pacifica is the little town where Royal Bee is, and so it all kind of ties ties together. Uh, but come hang out with us. We're going to be there all day. I'm flying up and flying back on the same day, so fingers crossed again that I don't 
think we're expecting any inclement weather, but um, that could really throw a wrench in, into things. So it's going to be <laughs> very typical uh, of me. If you ask my husband, he would definitely say this, um, trying to squeeze everything to the tightest part possible margin in terms of timing. So, um, well, fingers crossed. It's, it's going to be a fun day. I can't, I can't wait uh, to hang out in the store. I've loved Kelly's Yarn for a long time. I've never been in the store, so I'm very excited to, to be there and to meet a bunch of you, hopefully. So stop by, say hello. I'll have pins. I'll have stickers. So hit me up for one of those if you see me. Um, and I think that is about it on the knitting side of things. There's nothing really in, in terms of acquisitions. I mean, I've gotten a ton of yarn <laughs> coming into the house, but it's all related to Stitch Out Loud. I did get my uh, Magpie Fiber Society set this week. So this is Fiber Society number 35. This time it is on their swanky DK base. So it is lovely kind of plums and naturals. I honestly do not remember if I selected to get one of each or if because I made no choice they just sent me one of each but I got one of the speckled and one of the variegated this would be a really nice I always get these and, and when I when I like both of them I was like oh, this is always this would be a nice like two skein DK shawl and I need to find a pattern for that so two skein DK shawls if anyone has any recommendations hit me up down below um that is it. I think we are done. I said I was going to keep it quick. I think we'll come in under 40 minutes. Thank you all for taking some time out of your day today to, to spend it with me. I will be back in less than a week probably uh, with another uh, episode. I'm going to try the live thing to do the full collection um, walkthrough. I'm going to try to do live on YouTube and Instagram, in which case it will be saved here and you can watch that. Um, if that doesn't happen, then I will be back with another episode because I want to be able to show off all the yarn here. Um, so if the live thing doesn't work, I'll just do it as a, as a regular episode and hope to be back now that this collection is behind me. Um, hope to be back on a regular every two weeks uh, schedule. But... I know you will forgive me if I'm not, if I'm out riding my bike instead of filming videos or if I'm too tired <laughs> to, to film an episode because I just did, you know, a 95 mile bike ride. So have a great couple of weeks. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.